Now she has interviewed some of the world's biggest stars from Britney to Kylie and the Beckhams as part of her gigs with MTV, Top of the Pops and Live and Kicking. But now TV presenter Emma Ledden has turned her attention to writing and has just released her second children's book, All the Rainbow Colours, which delivers a powerful message of diversity and inclusion. We can see it on the screen there. We're going to see more of it in a moment. Emma, good morning to you. Good morning. And I'm so happy to be here. This is the first time I've been out of my 5K. The first time I've been out of my black leggings in 14 months. Had a little party in my car on the way here. Well, I'm well, so excited. We're not going to get rid of you, are you? are just going to be <laughs> lounging around here for the day. <laughs> I was trying to get tea and Claire, I was like, we don't do tea. I was like, really? I can't have a tea? But that's okay. So, yeah, it's, tea. it's good to I'm be out. Joking. And you come with this. Now, it's not your first book, it's, it's your second book. Yes, well, I'm, it's actually my fourth, if we're going to get really technical. But for, um, but for the little ones. <laughs> of the little ones, I'm only really joking, yeah. The second for the children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, this book is, it's a very, very, very gentle introduction to diversity. So I think it's a big topic for all of us, isn't it? And I know we're all talking about it a lot. And even in my professional work, it's, it's a big one. A lot of corporates are focusing on it. And having two young children myself, um, what really shocked me is how early they notice difference. So even taking a step back from the, the, the bigger picture of diversity, just like a year ago at my son at three, there was no difference. Whereas now there's a gender difference. Suddenly girls and boys are different. Uh, one of the little girls is wearing glasses. That was a whole thing. There's a difference in the way they look. Mm difference in their ability, but they're starting to really talk about it. There's little clicks. Um, my son is in preschool and they're in clicks. I mean, I had no idea I'd have to deal with any level of this at, at that age. Yeah, it's so interesting, isn't it? Isn't I have a boy and a girl and my son was saying, uh, boys are tough and boys are cool and girls are pretty. And I said, yeah. stop that right now. But you're right, they do pick up little things and that's why it's really important that we make sure they pick up the right things. And I think with the Black Lives Matter movement, there was loads of us who would, never have considered ourselves to be racist in any way, mm. learned some lessons about mm -hmm. how we are feeding into a culture and we need to do better. Particularly, I looked at the kids' books that I was reading them at bedtime and there was one that had yeah. a kid with a skin colour different than my own. One. Yeah. yeah, and I would be exactly the same. And it's interesting, I had some really interesting feedback on this book just recently, just the other day, where someone said, um, there's a girl with a wheelchair in this book and she had never seen a book that had somebody representing a disability before. And I'm sure they're out there, but I don't think they're among the books that we're all looking at all the time. So yeah, I mean, it's a very, very gentle book and it's really just, we're all different on the outside. We're all the same on the inside. It's about kindness, it's about compassion, it's about respect. So it's, it's the basic stuff in the hope, in the hope that we can all do better. Yeah. In the hope the next generation can do better and that's really what it is. And the bedtime story is a really good place to yeah. do it, isn't it? Because like we're all busy, we're all running around, all the working from home and it is that time where you just get to sit down. It's sometimes the only one-on-one -on -one time my kids get with me all day. Claire, see we're the exactly the same. We're the, we both work in our house and we have the two children and we kind of alternate the bedtimes and that hour where you go upstairs, you have the bath, you put on the jammies, you do the reading. And I find even my, my eldest son and he's only four, He'll even tell me about his day during that time. So there's an exercise in the back of this book where it's called The Colours of Me, where they just talk about what makes them special, what makes them unique. You know, so we talk about that he knows all the dinosaur names and he's a fast runner and all that. But it's just an opportunity to even talk about and build their confidence. Mm. I mean, that's a big thing, which again, I thought would automatically happen. But again, they're mixing with other kids and there's the more dominant personalities and my son is quite introverted. So I'm really trying to work on building his confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, to, and to reassure young people, and certainly I don't recall anything being around at our young ages. Yeah. Who is this aimed at then? So uh, the book is aimed at sort of three to six year olds. So the, the preschool, the Montessori, the ECC, the f junior infant, senior infants, first class. But I do think the message is applicable right the way up through primary. So one of the things, I'm hoping this won't just be a book. Mm. So one of the things I'm hoping is we can build this. There's the book, there's the workbook. We're hoping to build this into a programme for schools. So I'm currently just in talks with um, a wonderful arts centre on Tonner and seeing could we come up with a little production for schools. And, and almost like a little play. So maybe take these five characters at the front and build them out into their kind of diversity story. Do a little school tour, you know, when, when we're all allowed out again. 
Um, and then even maybe build an event into primary schools where each class can maybe, because it's different, I'm sure it's sixth class then first class, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and the book is definitely aimed at that bedtime story, younger age. But again, I think the message is applicable right through the primary school era, you know, age. Brilliant. Well, you're a real doer because <laughs> we mentioned your illustrious TV career and you've since moved into the world of, of media and communications and used what you learned about communicating in front of the camera yeah. for that. Now you're getting stuck into that. Do you take a minute to look at everything that you've done? No, does anyone? Does anyone? Well, let's roll the tape. I don't I mean, oh my God. You've had an incredible television career. Yeah. So starting out on The Den, is that where we would have first seen you? The Den. And, and you were younger than I remember. How old were you? 17. Only 17. I was 17. I know we were just chatting about that on the break. I was 17. I had just finished school, left school, the leaving cert in the June. And I started on The Den in the September. Oh, sure. And I didn't have a clue. 17. Mm. You're just clueless. But things developed quite rapidly from there. And you found yourself in, yeah. in London quite quickly on one of the biggest shows at the time on MTV. I did. I um, I had that experience that the rise was very fast. So mm. I did The Den for two and a half years and then um, not through reality TV, which I know is how it's done now, um, through audition I got, um, I was the first Irish MTV VJ. Fancy, fancy. And that was like at the peak yeah. of MTV. MTV is just one of I know. other music channels. And I know they have had certain catfish and big shows mm. that have done well for them, but it was massive. It Everybody was when MTV watched MTV. Music. Yeah. I, I was on MTV when but MTV the presenters played music. Yeah. On that were celebrities. Yeah, so I was with the um, I'm gonna make you all feel so old, the Cat Dealies and the Donna Ayres and Edith Bowman and Richard Blackwood. We used to do Select where you'd stand in Leicester Square and request your videos. And people would come up to the window yes, and wave and stuff. that was us. Yeah. Like was... how cool. And obviously some massive stars. We said some of them, Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, Robbie Williams. Yeah, yeah Britney Spears. I did Britney. Because um, she was kind of around the same time she became very big. So interviewed Britney. Um, I met David Beckham and Victoria. And yeah, I, I, like she said, Claire just said before you come on, do you remember? And you definitely forget, which is so silly. Because so many. And were you <laughs> living a, a certain lifestyle in London that would have fitted with what we saw on the telly? Was it all showbiz and parties? No, no, <laughs> I should tell you that it is. So, and again, you know this, when you have to turn up for television on a Sunday morning, there's only so much partying you can do. <laughs> um, so look, don't get me wrong. Yeah, but there, when you're 20, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe I was don't take yeah, that as yeah, seriously. Yeah, <laughs> no, there was, I mean, there was highlights. I went to the Brit Awards, the MTV Awards, you know, got to do some like, Really, it was a cool life, mm -hmm. you know. And I said, waking up and going, hey, I'm going to interview Beyonce today was, you know, very, very How cool. How bad. And then live and kicking, I mean, replacing Zoe Ball. Yeah, yeah. Well, now that, you know, that was a double-edged sword because they were at its peak. It was at its peak when we joined it. So a huge amount of attention on mm. it. But amazing, amazing experience. And again, that all happened really quick. And I was, I was young and still learning a lot. But yeah, no, it was... I look back and still think, oh my God, was it was it me? I mean, I know it was, but <laughs> yeah, mm. still yeah. can't believe but it. But you're in a, you know? a very def different space now. Listen, it took a village just to get me onto this couch this morning. <laughs> I have two children <laughs> under four. It's, yeah. I it's mean, do they know you've totally interviewed Beyonce? Different. Do they know who they're dealing with? Listen to me, if it's not <laughs> Paw Patrol or Peppa Pig or Baby TV, they have no interest. No, they should, they have, I'm mummy. You know, I, sure, I, I get dressed out of my black leggings and they look at me, take my hair down. They're like, mummy. What are you doing? I got my, my, I painted my nails this week and I collected my sons from crash. They were like, Mommy, your fingers are red. Why? <laughs> like, that'll tell you how long it's been since I painted my nails. No, because I'm just mommy at home. You know, the leggings go on, the hair goes up and I'm cooking sausages and playing a lot of dinosaurs. My son is four tomorrow. My eldest son it. is four tomorrow. So we had his little party yesterday and my house is now overrun with dinosaurs. So no, dinosaurs in the real world is dinosaurs. Well, well you're <laughs> still doing very important work, oh, not only at home, you. but with these fantastic books. So we wish you all the very best. Thank them. you. And it was lovely to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Claire. continued Thanks, success Hayden. and enjoy the birthday party tomorrow. Thank you. We'll let you get back home now to sort yeah, yeah, that yeah. out. Back. <laughs> back into the leggings. Now, Emma's brand new book, which we have for you here, oh, you have it on screen, The Rainbow Colours, is now available at emmaledden.com or indeed on Amazon. All the rainbow colours.